we're going to spend some time looking at how carboxylic acid derivatives react. And it's very similar to what we saw uh, with carboxylic acids in many cases. So in just a very generic case, what you want to think about is a carboxylic acid derivative has a carbonyl with a potential leaving group. This leaving group can vary depending on which carboxylic acid derivative you have. So if it's an acid halide, it might be something like a Cl. If it's an anhydride, the leaving group would be this acetate group. If it's an ester, it might be something like a methoxy group. Or if it's an amide, an NH2 group. And what we're going to be doing is reacting this with some nucleophile. And we're going to look at different variations, um, whether the nucleophile is negatively charged, neutral, or acidic conditions. And what you want to think about, we'll just keep it very general for right now, in U minus, what's going to happen, and you should already know this from what we've discussed, that nucleophile can attack the carbonyl carbon, and we get a tetrahedral intermediate. So there's your nucleophile. We still have our leaving group. And at this tetrahedral intermediate, now what will happen is this negative charge comes back down and your leaving group can leave. This first step is referred to as an addition. The second step, elimination. Now in the case of the nucleophile, this can be any of these groups corresponding to whatever new carboxylic acid derivative you're forming. So you could think of a Cl minus nucleophile, which would give you an acid chloride product. You could think of this acetate nucleophile that would give you an anhydride product. An alkoxy nucleophile would give you an ester product. And this amide nucleophile would give you an amide product. So basically, the same groups that can be potential leaving groups will act as your nucleophile. And what we're effectively doing here is converting one carboxylic acid derivative into another. But there's a really important key at this tetrahedral intermediate. We have both the nucleophile and the leaving group. And in this second step, you know, we said the leaving group leaves. But the fact is, if the nucleophile it added happens to be a better leaving group than what we've classified as the leaving group, that's what's going to leave. So in order for this step to take place to give the product, the leaving group must be a better leaving group, basically meaning a more stable atom minus than the nucleophile. Let's take a look at the reactivity series for the carboxylic acid derivatives. So here we have the acid chloride, which is the most reactive, followed by the anhydride, then the ester, then the amide, which is the least reactive. And what that means is if you look at the leaving groups on these, Cl is the best leaving group because Cl minus is the most stable. If 
And then of these, the amide is the poorest leaving group because NH2 minus is the least stable. So if we're looking at you know, a potential reaction, you're able to convert anything to the left of the list to something to the right of it. So you can convert an acid chloride to an anhydride, to an ester, to an amide. But you're not going to be able to convert something less reactive into something more reactive. So we're not going to see a reaction where we can convert an amide into an acid chloride, anhydride, or an ester, because all of these groups are better leaving groups than the nitrogen. You may be asked to assess a particular reaction where one carboxylic acid derivative is converted to another. Um, so that's what we have here. And this box is just saying, you know, draw in the equilibrium arrows that show which side this reaction lies. Does it lie to the products or to the starting materials? You can assess this in one of two ways. You can look at the carbonyl compound, and we can say that the carboxylic um, acid chloride is less stable. The ester is more stable. And reactions like to go to the side of the more stable thing. You could also look at it in terms of the nucleophile, and a negative on an oxygen is less stable than the negative on the halogen, the chlorine. So that also matches more stable product. The products here are favored over the starting materials. So for our arrow, We'll draw a long arrow to the right, a short arrow to the left, saying this reaction lies to the right side.